Hi, my name is Karen O'Bannon and I'm one of the team members for Kingdom Kids. Welcome to the Kingdom Kids Show. Um, today's episode is going to be what you want to know. And we're going to ask questions about what do you want to know about God? What do you want to know about Jesus, the church or church ritual? Just whatever you want to know. So um, before we do, I'd like to begin by introducing the panel. Hi, my name is Corey Bailey with the Indiana campus. Xavier Gray. I'm Reverend Linda Bunn, the Louisville campus. I'm Journey Gazaway. I'm Cameron Winburn. I'm Pastor Ken Jobst from the Louisville campus, and this is... Array of Faith Nifley. Hello, everyone. I am Minister Jay Renee from the Hardin County campus, and this is... Tinley Brooks Hamilton. And wait a minute, and this is... Bryce Young Stark. Bryce and Stark. Is God God or is Jesus God? Yes. Yes, God is God and yes, Jesus is God. And, and that's one of the special things about Christianity. That in Christianity we have an understanding that we call the Trinity. That God the Father, God the Son in Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit, three in one. Just for a practical example, if you look at your father, he's a father, he's a son, and he's an uncle. He's the same individual, but just in three persons, in one person. Yeah, and I think that's a, a great question to start off with because of the fact, when you think about the fact that Jesus was the embodiment of God with us here on earth. So if you know Jesus, then you know the Father. As scripture tells us all the time, he says, I and the Father are one. Yes. So, great question. God make mistakes? That's a very good question. Can God make a mistake? Has God ever made a mistake? And it turns out God doesn't make mistakes. Sometimes we don't understand all that God is doing and we only see a little sliver. And so we might jump to a conclusion, but God doesn't make mistakes. So if we think God made a mistake, we just need to pray for a little bit more understanding. And God doesn't mind that a bit. And I also think that when we trust God and let the time work out, we'll see how everything works perfectly. So things, God never makes a mistake in the fact that everything always works for the good. And I think if I could just really quick to jump on that, because of the fact sometimes things may not work out the way that you want them to. And even then, while you may not fully understand it, what you can know is that God does not make mistakes. And it may seem insensitive at the time to say that because it's a hurtful situation you're going through. But the reality is if you trust him, just like uh, Minister Renee said, if you trust him and just wait and see it through, that's when you'll begin to see the, the truth of the matter that God doesn't make mistakes. It's all designed. Because if he does, he doesn't make a mistake, but what he does for us when he teaches us, he turns the lights on in our eyes and our mind that we see it better and we understand it better what God was really doing. And that you get that as you grow. <laughs> okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I got to do just one more thing. As men and as mankind, because we live in a sinful world, when things, do, when things happen uh, that we don't understand, we can't always blame it on God either. Uh, God loves us so much that even when things happen, he brings them all in together and still makes a beautiful thing from it. Why can't we see God? Oh, I can take that one. Because <laughs> God is spirit, and so we can't see him because he's spirit. But guess what? We may not be able to see him, but we can feel him. When the wind blows, that's God blowing the wind. When the trees move. Because he created the trees, we see the trees move, and we see the Spirit of God. So we can't see him, but we can witness what he's doing. And, and this, is, this is a really, really special time. This is a special time when you get to use your faith. Yes. 
Because the Bible tells us there, there's going to be a time coming when we're, we will see God, mm -hmm. right? But this is a special time that, that we can trust God without having to see God with our eyes. We can see God with our heart, maybe, mm -hmm. and our spirit. Mm -hmm. But th this, is, this is the time when we're supposed to build up our faith. And you know, we can also see God in the kind acts of people. When people are kind or when you needed help and you never asked for it and they reached down to help you drop something or you fell down and they offered to pick you up, you're actually seeing the hand of God at work trying to help you. I was just going to say there's evidence of God all around. And when you see the beauty in the earth, when you see beauty in circumstances, you can see God. Uh, that way, J just like Jesus says, had I not been with you so long, if you see me, you see the Father. And, and let me say this, when you see the good in people, you see God. What does heaven feel like? Does it see, I thought we had a deal. See, these were supposed to be easy questions. That's what I thought, right? But no, thank you so much. That was a great question. What does heaven feel like? So I'll tell you this. I cannot speak to what heaven feels like. But what I can tell you is that when I personally have felt myself the closest being close to God or walking in the will of God, I felt like that was heaven to me when I was doing things I knew I shouldn't have been doing. Then that's when I felt the furthest away from God and I knew that that wasn't the place for me but when I feel that I'm walking with him when I feel that he's talking to me and I feel his presence that's what I can say that for me that's what heaven feels like what the Bible tells us tells us about heaven is that we already talked about God doesn't make mistakes so in heaven there's peace in heaven nobody gets angry or upset nobody's crying or sad heaven's a place of joy where God is celebrated and honored all day and all night. The angels praise him. So heaven is a special place where we'll have peace, no more tears, no more sadness, no more crying, and all we'll have is the love of God. It, it, it's the place where every, everything is right. Yes. Everything feels right. Everything is, everything is the way it was made to be in heaven. Yes. So if I could say it in those terms, I would say it's a place where there's no worrying, no being afraid if someone's not going to like you because you'll be loved by everybody. Um, it's a place where, where you, you don't have to be afraid at all of anybody or anything. And you don't have to worry about pain, right? That's what I believe heaven feels like. Think, think about all the time we worry about stuff. And there's nothing to worry about in heaven. Th think, oh my goodness. It, it's, a, it's a remarkable place. You, know, you all take a big smile. You can't, we can't see you with your mask on, but guess what? That's what heaven feels like. It's a happy place. <laughs> a happy place. <laughs> Is God a human or a spirit? So, yes, God is a spirit and God is love. But in Jesus, he's a human, right? Oh, ab absolutely. Yeah. Carry that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now uh, God... God was not made. So, so all, all people were made, right? People are part of creation. They're, they're part created or, but, but nobody made God. God. God was already there. Exactly. And I think what also could be said about that is the fact that that's a great question. Great question, right? Um, and what I would put with that is that God lives in you. And so as you are going to school, as you are interacting with your friends, as you are just in your space that you are, 
you, God is living on the inside of you. So no, you are not God, but God lives in you. And actually, you were created in the image of God, so you bear his likeness. So that means you should resemble God. So when you're at school and the things you do, even at play, you have to act more like God, meaning you don't treat people mean. If they say mean things to you, you don't respond back in a mean way. Uh, and that's hard to do, isn't it? Y'all don't have to answer. But <laughs> I'll answer for myself. It's hard to do sometimes when people are mean to you. You want to respond mean. But if you're, looking, if you're acting like God and you have God in you, you ought to respond in a different way, in a better manner, right? I just like to say that if someone's being mean to you, you don't get mad at them. Just repay it back with love. Yes. Well, very well said. Very, very well, said. well said. How did God get here to create the world? Very carefully. How about that one? Very, very, no. But no, real, um, man, great question. That is a great question. Great question. So we have, as pastors preached here in the past, this whole month, he's been talking about the creation story and everything. So there is a creation story in Genesis where it talks about how God spoke things into existence. And then there is the creation story where it talks about how he made things with his hands and, and they came as a community to create things. So there is this huge, uh, honestly, it's a scholarly argument, right? So it goes deep, right? There's a whole lot of stuff that goes along with it. But to answer your question, what we will say is that God created the world and everything in it with all of us in mind, with purpose and intentionality. He, when he created it, and I'm going to pass this to Pastor Ken because this is where that scholarly argument goes, but he created it with all intentionality, knowing that there is going to be a Mr. Xavier that's going to ask a question on St. Stephen's stage, and he says, I need to set the stage. I need to give him a brand new day that he's never seen before, clouds that will just roll and a sun that will shine that you ain't never seen this shine like that before on a beautiful day. So it's with intentionality and purpose and with love and to know that everything, we're to be good stewards over all all that God has blessed us with. So that's how God created the world. But then that's Pastor Kim with the scholarly argument. Oh, now. Get your PhD <laughs> right now. Here's happening. <laughs> no, bless you. That, that, that's, oh, man, that, that, is, that is such a good response. But you know, what? The, the first thing God had to do when God created everything, think about this for a minute. Where's, where is God? Where, where is God? God is everywhere. God, God takes up everything everywhere so the very first thing god had to do in creation is to make room god had to make room for each and every one of us and, and so god says i love all y'all so much i'm going to i'm going to make room for you and, and so that's what god did in creation the the first thing god had to do was to step aside a little bit and sometimes, you know, when we get angry, we want to step up and do something. But, but you know, God's showing us that, well, the, the first thing we might need to do is kind of step aside and make room for, make room for somebody. Make room for maybe somebody to make a couple of mistakes. Make room for somebody to try some new things out. Make room for, for somebody to feel special today. So the very first thing God did was, was to make room. And then he had to speak. Let us make Xavier in our image and after our likeness. Uh, so then God speaks. He, he spoke. Um, everything came through the word. The word. And so uh, when he created, he used his voice, his mouth to speak. Go ahead, Linda. I'm going to give you the rest oh, of that. He Come used on. His Take a piece. Holy Ghost imagination because he was like an artist with an empty blank canvas. And so he said, oh, let me paint the skies blue. Isn't that beautiful? What else does it need to balance it out? So then he gave us green earth. And then he gave us the blue sea. And so then he said, oh, it looks empty. I got to have some people there that look like me to create my masterpiece. So that's why we're here. Why is God so good to me? nature is good um 
he doesn't know any other way. He's a perfect God. He makes no mistakes. We already talked about. So he's good. And guess what? He's even good when you're not good. That's what makes him extra special. That he looks at us and says, but I know what my child, my son, and my daughter needs. So he gives us his goodness. Because when he created everything, he said it was good. And so when he created you, he said it was good, Cam. I, I, I like you. So I'm going to be good to you, Cam. <laughs> Cam Ren, he also, he can look at you and see you for who you will be in the middle of who you are. So the goodness that he, he's, see, you're already good, but you can't see it because you're walking through the process. But know this, when God looks at you, he sees good and he treats you the way he sees you. He created you good. You will be good. But you're just walking through the process, baby. Thank you. So that, that, <laughs> That question is one of those questions that usually get a shout started oh, yeah. when you start talking about the goodness of God. And I know, right, at, at the age that one is, is, sixth grade or fifth grade or something to that effect, you may not necessarily see all of the things in which a grown-up may see. But when you think about the goodness of God, you're talking about grace and mercy and how God will hold some stuff back that you deserve. So listen, let me, let me go ahead and put it like this, because I used to be, I know I don't look like it, but I used to be like 12 and 13 at one time in my life. I was there. And I remember mama told me, don't go outside when I leave. I went outside anyway. She ain't home. She don't know I'm gone. I went outside. I'm playing. But she came home earlier than I thought. So listen, that's a problem. I came home, I'm all dirty and muddy. She knows I've been outside. She asked me where I've been, and I've told her, I just went outside just for a second to blah, 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 and whatever the story was, right? The problem was what I deserved was a punishment. But what she did, she says, listen, here's what I'm going to do for you. I want you to sit and think about what you did, and I ought to give you this, but I'm not. I'm just going to make you sit there and think about it, because anything could have happened to you. So let's fast forward that and put this in your perspective as God is concerned. So much is happening in the world, and anything could happen at any moment. You could go to the store and not come back home because anything crazy could happen. But God is so good. What God will do for you is he'll hold some stuff back that maybe you deserve to get in trouble for whatever the case may be. But God loves you so much. And when you talk about it, why is he so good to me? I don't know. All I know is that his love is so great that he loves us beyond our faults and sees our needs. Who made God, Mary, and Jesus? Who made God, Mary, and Jesus? Right? So, so, so watch, nobody made God. And, and, and that's so hard for us to understand that, that you know, that's one of the most, the, the, the biggest thing to wrap your head around is that before anything else was, God was already God. And, and so that's just a powerful thing, right? So, so people are made, people are made. Mary's a person, Mary was, was made. Jesus is the, the God man, right? So comes comes from heaven above, but but that's you know, God always was. God's eternal. That's the the word. But let me add this because I think I hear two things happening. So when we go into the story of how Jesus was born in a manger, is that what? So what God did was God spoke to Mary who he created because she's a person and she said Lord let your will be done then the Holy Spirit hovered over her and then Jesus is born from Mary so now God is in Jesus that's I think I'm trying to get your whole question here so God created all of that to happen to bring Jesus in the earth to die for our sins so Jesus could identify, he, he could relate to us in our bodies and our humanity. So God gave us himself in a human body 
so we could see God physically and say, I see God. You know, when Jesus was walking among uh, the people, people saw him. And what did they do? They flocked to him because they saw God in Jesus. Who does God love? He loves us all, each and every one of us. There's nothing that can separate you from God's love. Do you not know, Journey, that you can't be bad enough for God not to love you? There's nothing you can do that will make God say, no, nah, I don't like her no more. Now, you know how we get, right? Me, right? So if there's somebody that is mean to us, well, you ain't my friend no more. I don't like you. No, I don't hang out with them no more. But God will never do that. God loved you so much that it doesn't matter how bad you, you can't get bad enough for him to stop loving you. And for that alone, he just loves. No matter what, he loves. And he loves sincerely and deeply. And um, that's what I love about God. <laughs> when you experience and feel the love of God, if you ever felt unloved, it's when you can feel the love of God and you know what it feels like. And you'll learn when it's getting older. So I, I just want to add some more people to the list that he loves. He loves the ones that are living on the street and have nowhere to go. Yes. He loves the ones that don't know where they're going to get their next meal. He loves the children who don't have parents. He loves those who are being abused and don't know who to cry out. God loves even them. God loves those whose parents are uh, overseas and they don't get to see them. God loves them too. And God's in charge. Watch it. Yes, so, so watch, watch. God loves you and God's in charge. Put those together and oh my goodness, right? We find out that he'll supply for the orphan. He'll feed the hungry. He'll give parents to those that have none. That's what we'll find out. And he magnifies his love. Like when you said he'll help the homeless. He'll help those that feel loveless. And that he magnifies that and he touches the heart of Journey. He touches the heart of Cam and Rhea and says, go love that person. Or that person you see in school that is sad and you'll go over and be kind to them. That's showing God's love that's in you. How do we connect, like really feel connected with God when we pray? When prayer, <laughs> it means we have, we talk to God. Do you ever call any of your friends on the phone? How, it's easy to have a conversation with your friend, right? Well, God is our best friend and greatest friend. So it's so easy to talk to him like we would talk to a friend and we can tell him everything we don't understand, what we're afraid of, what we'd like to do, what we feel sad about. And guess what? He hears all of our prayers. Now, will he answer them all right away? No, not all the time. But sometimes he'll teach us how to wait for the answer. So I would say this. Now, I, I'm getting ready to jump into this, but just remember, you asked you ask the question, okay? So when you get ready to pray to the Father, you don't have to pretend that he's there. But instead, in your mind, just think, says, you know, this is, can I just tell you what I do? Okay. So I talk to the Father like I'm talking to anybody else. And if I need to really connect, I'll say, Lord, I need you right now. And then I will say, Holy Spirit, please fill me. Yes. You know, because sometimes... I get bogged down, and that is my connection, is the Holy Spirit. And then I will be real with the Lord. I say, hey, God, this is what I'm feeling. I'm mad. Sometimes when we go to, to talk to the Lord, we think because of the hurt or how we feel in our heart that God doesn't want to hear that. God wants to hear everything on your heart. And when you start to pour that out to the Lord and you let it all go, he knows exactly what to do. And then you know what? People experience his presence in different ways. You'll feel your heart like a release. But this is what you always do. Just be real. God knows every language that is spoken because he created it. So it doesn't matter how you speak to him, what language you speak to him in. When you speak to him in truth and with your whole heart, 
you will feel your connection with God because he's not imaginary. Just because he's spirit and you can't see him doesn't mean that he's not real. Just remember in your heart to know that God is real. I like you're asking us questions today. God loves our questions because God has every answer that we need. So he's not afraid of your questions. So don't be afraid to ask him things you don't understand. When you're in school and you're studying and you, you know you got a test coming up, you're not sure you're gonna pass it, uh, you know, just don't get frightened. Talk to God about it. Tell him, Lord, I'm, a, I'm scared, I study, but I can't get some of this, I don't understand it. You gotta turn the lights on for me, God. Help me to understand it, and he will. And I'm surprised that Rhea asked that question because Rhea gave me the phone number to God just as we were sitting there before. She told me it was 777 call heaven. When that, she, so how did she ask that question? She, <laughs> Go on, Rhea. <laughs> and, and I, I want to just kind of piggyback on, on the one thing that uh, Minister Williams said. J just because you can't see God doesn't mean God is imaginary. It means God is spirit, yes. right? So, so there's, God is not a pretend thing. God, God is very real, but we see him with eyes of faith. And, and when we pray, we can, we can say whatever we want, understanding that God is always listening to us. And, and so God's always listening to us. Then over time, we need to be able to learn to always listen to God. Thank you all. Thank you all so, so much. I just want you all to give yourselves a round of applause for just being up here. This was absolutely, absolutely amazing. And we would like for everyone who has watched this, who is, who is watching this, to like it, share it, and just to point out that Kingdom Kids is on all social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can... Uh, Visit our site on Facebook at St. Stephen's Kingdom Kids. On Instagram, we are SSC underscore Kingdom underscore, underscore Kids. And on Twitter, we are at Stephen Kids. So really quick, thank you, Mr. Corey Bailey, Mr. Linda Bunton, Pastor Ken, <laughs> and of course, Jay Renee. Thank you, thank you so much for being a part. Youth, thank you all so much. Those were awesome questions, awesome questions. And I even learned something. So there's always growth in our faith. Thank you again for watching Kingdom Kids and stick around. Uh, See us on the next show and just remember, wear your crown.